That's just me. Okay. We got one more thing to talk to you about. And uh, this one, not going to lie, we chuckled about a couple of things about this this week, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it over to Corey. He can talk about it, and then, and then we'll discuss again. You ready? All right, it's all sure. you, man. You got it. All right, cool. So this next one basically is, uh, we got a few links down there. You can check them out down below. But it basically is talking about uh, the company called Spin Launch. And it, it's basically a company, a California-based company that the, the, the guy uh, started back in 2014. And they're using basically a giant kinetic launcher. Uh, to do a bunch of testing to see if they uh, and they that it's looking pretty good, but see if they can launch satellites into orbit with just a kinetic uh, a kinetic launcher. And you see the pictures down there. It's it's basically a big circle. It's the one they've got now. It's the taller than the Empire or Statue mm-hmm. of Liberty, excuse me. And uh, they already done a bunch of testing. The main thing maybe to take away from this too is it's not like a concept. This is a company that's kind of purposely flown below the radar like on purpose so because the even the guy they interviewing the guy he talks about it like something that's a bit sounds like this you kind of just do it on mm-hmm. your own and and just show you know start talking about it when it right. works um because it's just so different than let's say what the status quo is for getting things sure. to orbit and uh so yeah if, you, if you're still a little bit confused what it is yeah i'm sure it's some pictures there you can show up but basically it's an arm in a cylinder, in a in a vacuum space, so it's a vacuum in there to help with uh, friction and whatnot. And then when it gets the proper uh, radio velocity, they release it from the arm, and it shoots out a or it exits a chute uh, out the top and just flies at the mm-hmm. top. And uh, whatever, wherever, have whatever speed they were intending to send it up, that it's all kinetically done, you know, and it launches it. Uh, and they talk a lot about it being in launching rockets. And so I had to just do a little digging to make sure I knew they weren't maybe misusing rocket because <laughs> rocket is implies a rocket. Uh, it has a rocket engine. It's a rocket uh, propelled right. vehicle. And I want to just be sure, is this a device they foresee completely launching things all the way to orbit? Uh, and it doesn't look like that's the case. Kinetically launched, I think I'd say, up to whatever altitude you know they need and then the rocket on board would take over uh some some cool thing i i wanted to just quickly mention i'll pass it to here in a second but uh, i had to think to myself okay if you're spinning something with enough radio velocity to get it this high what kind of g's are we talking <laughs> about just as you know back of the napkin depending you know how how much power we're using right. whatever and they're talking like upwards 16,000 g's and I know Mike, we're shooting this back and forth over the week, and he's like, "So basically, nothing ever living nope. is on board this mm-hmm. vehicle," and uh, that's kind of not true. <laughs> uh, I had to also look up the the last link, which I'm not going to go into, but you could just check it out if you want. If you guys know anything about target tar- tardigrades, it's a small animal. Only you knew this. That Only can you actually knew. do a bunch of crazy stuff. <laughs> bunch of crazy stuff. It's cool. It's been up into orbit. It survives a bunch of crazy things. You got to check it out. But anyway. We're talking about spin launch. No, so my first think, my first comment was squish, right? I was like, there's nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing human, nothing, nothing that actually is is part of a scientific experiment that does not at the elemental base like that that has got flesh or is living is ever going to make this journey to space. Corey proved me wrong within minutes, right? But the difference <laughs> is it it, it was ten thousand G's. Now look. The way this thing works is kind of crazy, crazy because this little spinning arm inside of this device, right? Now, there's a couple of pictures I'm going to bring up here. And uh, this little spinning arm that you see, this black thing, rotates inside this vacuum in space. And then basically what it does is it, it, it poof, it loose, it, it lets go. And when it does, the mass of this thing just takes off like a projectile, right? Brilliant idea because one of the yep. things that they're saying is this is tremendous, very, very, very cheap because you're only putting the little the little tip of this thing up there. And then of course this little booster is going to fire somewhere, you know, lower atmosphere and it's going to make the rest of the journey what it needs to do. So it's cheap, right? Uh, It is also from all intents and purposes, a tried and true system, because if, you know, talking back to almost caveman times, this is the same kind of, you know, bolo kind of apparatus that they could swing a, a rock and hurt somebody with way back in prehistoric times almost. So that's yeah. unique. But here's the problem. I think it's inherently dangerous because I would have to think <laughs> for me personally, you sitting on top of a rocket is still dangerous. 
spinning sure. at, at yeah. you know, 10,000 Gs also to me sounds really dangerous, <laughs> right? Uh, I wonder I wonder if they could make the walls of this thing strong enough to survive if this projectile gets away from it, because if it does, um, that thing could still end up in some foreign land, you know, and someone could think like, <laughs> like, did yeah. somebody launch an attack against our country? Because it, this thing could be like in the backside of Colorado, but it could end up in Spain, you know, with the right velocity. Boom. But that's my theory. I'm sticking <laughs> to it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how far it could go, uh, and I would have to uh, try to find more about that because I would also be fascinated to to see what kind of scenarios they have tested as far as when things don't go right. Don't go right. I mean, it has to be part of your business case when you look at something like this. Like, okay, this is what it wants to do. If it doesn't do that, what kind of fail safes <laughs> do you have in Evan in store for being... this? And I would. I'm just thinking to myself, okay. Maybe they have. Um, I'm just. I'm just brainstorming here. But maybe they're. Maybe the, let's say the the space on both sides of the the axis of rotation. How many? How much distance must be cleared in that that direction know. for them to even have like gotten permission to do such a know. thing? Number uh, one, it's uh, and it is it is quite interesting. You um, know, maybe made, they make the projectile yeah. like an indie car. It's just going to splatter against the wall anyhow and disintegrate into micro pieces if it if it you right. know if it doesn't right. make the journey. But still. It not you know me. I'll knock it and then I'll say I'm not really knocking it, but I'm really kind of knocking it. Okay, the, the thing <laughs> the thing is, it's a it's brilliant idea, really great idea. I you know I'm surprised nobody's thought of thought about it before. However, um, I see this as being probably successful. I I think if you're if you're the type of person that needs to get something into space and you're willing to take a risk on getting it up there because you can get it up there for cheap. And it's part right. of your development cycle that you need this one system tested out in space and you need to get it up there. I would, I would put it with these guys. Why not? I mean, good chance it yeah. makes it up there, right? The, 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 yeah. You pay them the money. I, you know, I, what's it probably worth them? $20 million to get something set in the space. I don't know. I, I was trying to find that out actually to see how much cheaper it was. Uh, some other numbers in case you're, you're at home, like wondering, okay, what, you know, what's actually scale are we looking at here? Uh, the one that the, the tested back in the 22nd of October, it's a, it was a suborbital device, so it wasn't getting it to orbit, but it was suborbital. It was successful, uh, but that's a one third scale of what they intend it to be mm. ultimately. And there, and again, a one third scale was still 165 feet, which is taller than the Statue mm. of Liberty. So uh, it's going to be large, and they're saying that the eventual payload they're aiming for is about 440 pounds of payload. So uh, again, if you're talking about 440 pounds rotating around an arm that long at significant mm. speed, there's a lot of force stored kinetically in in inside this giant structure. And I I agree. There's it's going to be fascinating to keep up with this. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm so interested. there's this part here on their website that says spin launch is hiring and open positions. And I'm <laughs> not going to lie, thought went through my head. I wonder if they have any test pilot positions. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Oh, come on. It's uh, Friday night. Lighten up. <laughs> you too, Internet. True. Lighten up. It's true. I mean, I get it. It's true. However, though, in this picture, it is interesting. Look at the scale. Okay. The scale of these yeah. guys relative towards what this thing is for 440 pounds, whatever this bullet type device looks looks like at the very bottom of their webpage. You scroll all the way down. It The scale, to me, uh, you know... It, that's sizable enough that hey, I they got a good shot of making this happen, right? They do. It is pretty fascinating. Yeah. Uh, just goes to show you that there's pretty... there's one other part of this though that is it's never going to be reusable. No, no part of this can be reusable. I don't see any way of them recapturing any of this. Whatever goes up is staying up there. It ain't coming back. I saw something about that, Tell me um, and that might just be have been for testing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, blah, 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 blah. Ultimate plan to return the orbital launch vehicle back to earth so it can be reused. That's in the plan. Okay. So I don't have any other information about exactly right. that. Um, so I will have to see, but that's, I think if I, I can't find it right now, but I'm pretty sure I read also that the, the one of the tests they did. They did launch it, and then they were able to recover it, and it was in reusable state. State, mm, you know, cool. with minor repairs. That's and stuff. pretty cool. So, um, hey, 
it's, it's a unique concept. I, I, it kind of, I have to say this too. You remember the movie Contact with, with where they dropped the, you know, uh, it's yes. like, I, I just, in my head, it's like HR Haddon. Like you, you figure like there's some evil billionaire behind this plan that just is like, it's a ruse to a degree, but not really. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just brings that effect on. I don't know. All right, folks, let us know what you think in the comments. We're, we're going to launch things in orbit or ballistic missiles. Yeah, or, or, yeah, I mean, it'd be a really big cannon, too. I mean, if, if it, it's <laughs> suborbital. Well, well, yeah, well, you know, we tried doing that back, uh, I think, mm -hmm. in the 50s. We had some old North, North uh, no, Battleship New Jersey mm -hmm. guns that they put together. I, I don't have this. Uh, I'm just off the cuff, just kind of what I can remember. But they put two Battleship New Jersey 16-inch guns mm -hmm. together, and they were trying to see if they could launch stuff into orbit right. with those. But that didn't. That also well, there's didn't work, been yeah. there's been some pretty pretty large guns out there that have tried that maneuver. Matter matter of fact, I think Germany had one on the back of a a rail train that had some pretty massive. Oh, the Gustav. Yeah, the Gustav or something. There's a couple out there. So uh, there was some. There was. There's yeah. been some big guns built before. But this is this is completely mm -hmm. different. Oh, yeah. All right. Let us know what you think in the comments below, folks. Um, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for tuning in. A unique launch system. Let us know if you think it could if it could make it. I mean, uh, it, it's just very unique. I don't I don't have any other thoughts on it. No, yeah, same, same. It's it's going to be very interesting to watch the development, especially the forces they need to yeah. manage as it gets to the larger full scale uh full scale uh device uh and i can only hope that one day i see it in my feed for for launches yeah, that'd be kind of neat so i can watch them live and watch it fling something really high i mean that that'll be interesting so i mean one thing too if you're into rockets and watching launches it's not gonna be it won't be that it's totally oh, you know it, it's, yeah, it's not gonna be i, I just had so. that thought of people sitting there on the sidelines waiting for this thing to go and it's gonna be like what 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 and it's be gone. And it's be like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. It's okay. Cool. It's gone. Well, because you won't even see it. It's not like a launch that's going to start off very slow and climb up into space. It's going to be what like, I mean. that's what gone. I mean. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be totally different than a rocket. It's going to make some so. weird sound like you just opened up a can of coffee and it's gone. You know, like, it's, that's all. Well, yeah. It's not going to be see through, nope. right? I mean, obviously nope. not. Right. So it's just going to go. As you said, it's just gonna it's just gonna shoot it out and bye. That's, that's all we that. got. All right, I got nothing else. <laughs> that, that's that. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yep, I'm done. Hey everybody, it's yep, a Friday night. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate all your energy and uh, you guys showing up. And for those who are gonna watch this later, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see if we can get more stuff out to you come uh, Monday night. So take care, everybody. Yeah, cool. Have a great week, and we'll see you real soon. Peace. Bye bye. Later. Bye.